Kaczynski, and I'm Associate Dean of Admissions here at UIW School of Osteopathic Medicine. All right, Andrew. Uh, thank you for agreeing to uh, meet with me. Absolutely. Uh, can you tell the viewers a little bit about uh, the school here and how long it's been in place and just a little bit about the school? Sure. Uh, University of the Incarnate Word School of Osteopathic Medicine, which we refer to as UIW SOM, mm -hmm. uh, is one of the newest schools of osteopathic medicine in the country. And we have just finished our third application cycle. And so we have two years of medical students. Um, and so we will be welcoming our third class at the end of July. And so we are a community-based medical school. We are located about 10 minutes south of downtown San Antonio, um, in the south side of San Antonio. We are in a medically underserved area, which is intentional. Mm -hmm. you know, we are a community-based medical school, so um, if we are going to call ourselves a community-based medical school, we need to be located in an area where we know our community has significant medical needs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, our campus is the um, is. Um, located in the Brooks community, and this is actually uh, the home of the former um, Air Force Aerospace Medical School. So we've kind of come full circle. This used to be a medical school years ago, yeah. Aerospace Medical School. So if you were a flight surgeon many years ago, you were trained here on this campus. And wow. so um, it's a medical school once again. And um, it's we have a, um, our focus is on uh, primary care. Mm -hmm. However, you know, students will be prepared to really go into any, any specialty depending on what their calling is and, and certainly what their aptitude is. Okay. Um, for the students who may not know kind of what osteopathic medicine is, mm -hmm. can you briefly explain sure. what is osteopathic medicine? Sure. And, and we know that. And mm -hmm. there are obviously two ways to become a licensed physician in the U.S. And one is um, the allopathic route that leads to an MD degree, and the other is the osteopathic route that leads to a DO degree. Mm -hmm. Right now, about um, one-fourth of every student, every medical student, is in a DO program. Mm -hmm. And so those numbers continue to grow. It's one of the fastest growing professions in the country. And so um, I think it's just a matter of sheer numbers. There are mm -hmm. more uh, graduates from medical, uh, from allopathic schools than there are right now um, from DO programs. And so um, the years in medical school are the same. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the years in uh, different residency programs are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference is that students in DO programs get additional training in what's called osteopathic um, manual techniques, which is basically using your hands um, to help to diagnose or treat um, um, various, uh, various illnesses, uh, whether it's chronic asthma, whether it's back injuries, whether it's neck injuries. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a, the degree that a future physician would use these OMT techniques would really depend on perhaps their specialty. Mm -hmm. um, a family physician or someone in sports medicine yep. may use that a little bit more so than than a surgeon. Mm -hmm. um, and so, however, um, we certainly want all of our students, all of our graduates to come away with a firm understanding and a comfort level with those techniques. Also, too, um, the foundation of osteopathic medicine is really um, a holistic approach, mm -hmm. seeing um, the whole mind, body, and spirit. Um, so seeing it again um, a patient holistically and really looking at a patient for more than just the symptoms that they present um, and osteopathic medicine too will have a focus on preventive measures so I think that's it in a nutshell absolutely uh, how many students do you accept per year how big is your classes sure. um, here at the school sure so we have 150 Oh, wow. Which is a, I mean, it's for a new school. Yeah. It's, it's a good size, and so we will um, 150 each year. Mm -hmm. We also have a master's of biomedical sciences mm -hmm. program, which is um, uh, um, we have many students that we know um, may have had a few bumps along the way. Yeah, and so, but we know that they can be competitive students for medical school or other professional programs, and so it's a one-year program um, that has maybe about 50 students. Um, and at the conclusion, they may be um, 
capable of applying and being admitted to other professional programs. Okay. So uh, the, the number of applicants that you have per year kind of ranges in oh, what, what um, number? Thus far, this past year, we have had we had almost 4,000 applications. Wow. And how, how many of those do you interview? So um, it is, um, well, obviously, and we're not unique, yeah. m medical schools, um, it, it's competitive. So we have um, almost about 4,000 applications. Uh, we interviewed um, close to 700 students. Mm. We want to bring um, as many students on, qualified students on campus as possible. We really do think it's important to meet students face to face. Yep. Um, we have um, we we have an MMI or a multiple mini interview format, mm. which we think has been very beneficial for the type of school we are and the type of curriculum that we have, mm -hmm. and so that's been effective for us. Um, and so um, from that interview format, we'll admit maybe about 400 or so students. Okay. And a little bit about the kind of for the students that are applying to medical school, the application process. Can you talk about some maybe some tips to be successful or what should students know sure. about the application process? Sure. And um, when I talk about our application process, and, and this is going to be very specific to us because, mm -hmm. and again, um, something that's important for viewers to know is that the DO process and um, the allopathic application process is there's going to certainly be some differences. Mm -hmm. And so it's not going to be one size fits all for every school, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. I guess we can't make it that easy for, for students. Um, our application cycle open May 2nd, mm. and it will close uh, March 15th of next year. So that's a pretty... Wow. I didn't know Pretty it was open significant well. cycle. Yeah. So um, now we will interview qualified candidates until the program is filled. And is it so, rolling admissions? And it is rolling admissions. Okay. Now, um, many students will feel as if it's advantageous to apply early, um, which in many cases it is, mm -hmm. if you are um, a qualified applicant, meaning if. Um, um, you've concluded with your undergraduate experience and you have a final transcript mm -hmm. um, and a GPA that is competitive and you have MCAT scores that are competitive and you're, you think that you at least meet the school's average. Okay. Before, um, before we go, I'm so sorry to um, sure. disrupt you. What is your, what is considered a competitive Absolutely. MCAT and GPA for you? Absolutely. So um, for us, um, a competitive MCAT score it would be at least a, like about a 502, okay. 3.55 GPA uh, cumulative, and about 344 was our science uh, cumulative GPA. Okay. So I think that that's what you want to look at is at least, you know, do I meet the average? Absolutely. Um, and so, um, you know, if my MCAT score is a little bit lower than the average, then you know, perhaps is my GPA higher than the mm -hmm. average? So kind of like a sliding scale. Um, and so you, you, you get a sense for how you would compare with the general, uh, the general applicant pool. Many times um, I talk with students that's, you know, I say, this is what I have. However, I'm going to retest. Mm -hmm. I feel as if I prepared a bit more. Um, I've gone through the test once. I understand the format of it because a lot of times it's not that candidates don't understand the content. Yep. They have the content, but it's the exam itself mm -hmm. and it's preparing for the day itself. So sometimes my advice is, you know, it's still early in the cycle. Why don't you wait until you have that second set of scores? Yep. So my advice is you apply at the point that you're going to be you're going to present the best application mm -hmm. um, as long as it's not too late in the cycle, as long as it's not February or March. Yeah. So um, um, that being said, though, we do receive, I'd say, about um, one third of our applications very early in the cycle, and we do start interviewing in August. So, so it is beneficial to get your application sure. in as soon as possible. Sure. And, and making certain that your application is at its best early in the cycle. Okay. And let's go into the kind of interview kind of day. You mentioned your interview format. Uh, what are some do's and don'ts of the interview day or kind of process? Sure. So um, obviously it's, um, and there's, there's a lot of um, information available on the multiple mini interview format. Um, it, it's, 
you can't prepare a whole lot yeah. um, for it with, with the exception of getting a good night's sleep, um, obviously looking uh, professional and feeling mm-hmm. comfortable. Our advice to candidates is to just be yourself mm-hmm. um, and to it's our format is um, one where their students are at nine different stations. We'll have ten minute, um, eight minute conversations with the interviewers. There's prompts, interview prompts at each station for mm-hmm. them to read, to understand, and then they have a conversation with the interviewer about that prompt. And it really is meant to be a dialogue, um, not meant to test their medical knowledge. Mm-hmm. They're not physicians yet, so it's not meant to trick them. It's just meant to um, get to know them a little bit better. We look for um, some of those, I guess, what's referred to as soft skills, those attributes which we feel as if as which we feel are important: communication skills, um, you know, cultural sensitivity, mm-hmm. collaboration, um, problem solving, analytical skills. Um, some of, again, some of those soft skills that uh, will be important as a, a as a future medical student and as a physician. So, um, but again, it's you know we want students to be genuine. Mm-hmm. We don't want them to tell us what they think they necessarily want us to hear. You can most people can see through that. So I guess be genuine. Um, practice uh, having uh, conversations about current topics. Um, with with friends, with family, um, with advisors, with faculty, um, many schools will will have mock M- run mock MMIs for their students. Mm-hmm. If you're fortunate to go to an undergraduate institution that offers that, please take advantage of it. Um, and so those are just a few tips for the for the MMI. Okay. And out of the four thousand students that you have applied to your school. How do you choose, what's the ideal candidate for your particular school and just the osteopathic kind of sure. um, community itself? Like, what makes a ideal candidate for Sure. So, we talked a little bit already about kind of the numbers and the mm-hmm. metrics. So, putting that, as, because basically, we obviously um, want students that can handle a medical yep. school uh, curriculum. So, putting that aside... Um, we have a we don't have a traditional curriculum mm-hmm. where it's just lecture based. We have an integrated case based self directed learning mm-hmm. uh, curriculum, and so um, uh, students that feel comfortable working in groups, um, um, that collaborative spirit, so to speak, um, is important to us. And how that's demonstrated in an application, um, we look at that. Um, we look at um, applicants that have demonstrated a commitment to their community. Mm-hmm. Again, we're a community-based medical school. Um, it's not that they have to necessarily come from South Texas. Uh, we know that the needs of our community aren't unique. Yep. We find those needs all across our country. And so, um, you know, a candidate who understands those needs and are they prepared to go back to contribute to their community in a positive way. And so that that sense of mission, um, our institution was founded on a commitment to service. Mm-hmm. And so I guess that spirit of service um, is, is very important to us. Um, again, um, an understanding somewhat, um, at least on a primary level of osteopathic medicine. Again, not that they have to understand all of yep. the manipulative techniques, that's our job to educate them on that. But some of the foundational concepts is important as well. Okay. What are your thoughts on non-traditional students? Does that help at all? A student who, who has, was either in the military or had another profession prior, does that help at all? Interestingly, um, you will find more non-traditional students at DO schools compared to allopathic schools. Huh. Um, and so we, um, our average age um, of our student body is... This past year was 25, hmm. and so we have. Um, so typically, we will enroll students that have had previous careers, have been in the military. Um, we appreciate um, the life experiences, mm-hmm. the maturity levels. Um, we are looking for diversity um, on all levels, and and again, I think especially with our curriculum, um, that can be an adjustment 
for some for some students. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the maturity level and that life experience mm-hmm. that some of our non traditional students brings to the table is very important. Okay. I just want to talk about some of the myths that are out there surrounding osteopathic medicine. Uh, maybe you can kind of address that. Sure. In terms of osteopathic versus allopathic, uh, there's a lot of people that say the osteopathic schools accept students with lower scores or GPAs. Can you maybe address, talk about? I think that, um, I think on when you compare, if, if we're strictly looking at the metrics um, and the averages, the, the averages are a little bit lower, but I think that the osteopathic schools are, first of all, they're still looking at competitive, competitive, gotcha. competitive applicants. Mm-hmm. And I think what osteopathic schools are doing is understanding that there are students that academically are solid students that mm-hmm. will make great physicians that may not necessarily um, have a 516, 517, Mm -hmm. but have done well on the exam, and have those other skills, those people skills, those analytical skills, those problem solving skills, those communication skills, that we know Mm -hmm. that patients are demanding. Um, And you know what? There could be some, some, some candidates that perhaps have some of those higher scores and maybe better matched for research positions. Mm. And so I guess maybe there is, I, we, we know that, that that myth is there. Um, I don't think it bothers us as much anymore. Gotcha. Um, for the students who think that they may be too old to go into medical mm-hmm. school, what is the, is, do you have the oldest person in any of your classes here? Do you know that age off the top of your head? I do believe that we have someone in their in their um, early 40s. Early 40s, okay. Do you think that there is that myth out there that people are too old to go to medical school? What are your thoughts on that? First of all, you're gonna be that age no matter what. Yep. So it's not as if you're gonna stop turning a certain age. Um, you gotta follow your dream. Yeah. You have to follow your dreams. And so um, you, you follow your dream and just you go into it knowing that perhaps yes, there's going to be those that are going to be younger than you, but you know we learn from one another. Yep. And you, um, as a non-traditional student, you will be able to offer um, others in your class um, a perspective of mm. life experiences, um, of maturity, and probably common sense mm-hmm. and um, level-headedness, perhaps that um, others might not have. And so again, um, don't let that stop you. Yeah, that's, that's really good advice. For the students who have a low MCAT or a low GPA, what are your recommendations in terms of they really want to become a doctor, but they may have that low GPA or MCAT? What can they do to increase their chances of matriculation? So again, I think it's, it's looking at averages. Mm-hmm. And so being realistic. So I'm, you know, I'm always in support of someone who, who follows their dream, but I think you also have to be realistic. Yep. Um, so looking at the averages, and then if, um, you know, we've seen individuals that have taken MCATs five or six times. Mm-hmm. So the question is, how are you, how are you preparing? Mm-hmm. Um, are you taking the exam too close together and really not doing anything different from one exam prep to another? Yep. So I always ask a student, so how did you prepare for this exam, mm-hmm. you know, compared to that exam? What are you doing different? Um, are you um, are you taking an organ? Are you taking uh, a prep class? Um, are you how many hours are you spending? How many practice exams are you taking? Um, can you have someone mentor you who has been successful yeah. um, taking this exam? So, um, unfortunately, and and I do think that our admissions committee um, balances the importance, but we're also not going to ig- ignore yeah. uh, the exam because it is a criteria that we that we look at um, so it, it's it's really being realistic with with how you prepare and not underestimating how much preparation you mm-hmm. have to put in for to prepare for that exam very few individuals can go into that exam with little preparation yep. and come out with a successful score 
On the other hand, as far as the GPA, um, we see many students that have had um, various life experiences that have impacted their GPA, mm -hmm. whether it's been an illness or a parent's illness. We simply, it's been economics that have impacted their performance, mm -hmm. um, go into school uh, full-time and working full-time mm -hmm. to afford their education. That's difficult to do. We see, we see students that have had a slow start, but yet have continued to, you know, to raise their GPA, mm -hmm. which obviously works to their favor. Um, that's why I think sometimes post mm. can help a yeah, student. I was going to ask you about that. What are your thoughts on post or even the master's program? Sure. Similar to the one you offer here. Does that look, does that help? If, for us, it does. Okay. Um, for us, it does um, because it gives them an opportunity to, you know what, I, I need additional um, a strengthening of my science foundations mm -hmm. and so it buys a little bit of time mm -hmm. and, and it's 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 kind of like okay this is my one last chance yeah. to prove myself yep. and so students understanding the importance can rise to that challenge mm -hmm. and do well with that program and um, and schools can look favorably on it so um, I think those are some things that um, that a candidate can do I think another recognition is that there are other ways, there are tremendous opportunities in the healthcare um, field besides mm -hmm. becoming a physician. Yep. And so um, if, it, if this particular profession doesn't work out, you know, what are my other options? Mm -hmm. can, is, there a, is there a plan B that I can be happy and satisfied with? That's a good point. Uh, does a high GPA kind of compensate for a low MCAT or vice versa? Does a it depends on how high the GPA is and how low the MCAT okay. is. Good. So, you know, it's, I wish that this was a precise science yeah. and, and unfortunately it's, it's not and no two candidates are alike. And Good. so that's why, you know, um, our admissions committee takes, takes, takes their jobs very seriously. Um, you know, we always, I think at every deliberation, we just, you know, we say to each other, this is only someone's life mm -hmm. um, because there are just so many different, different factors. And so it really is looking holistically, um, you know, can they do the work, mm -hmm. um, number one, and is this going to be a good place for them and are they going to be a good fit for us? Mm -hmm. And what are your thoughts on reapplicants? Um, is that a red flag, or mm -hmm. is that something that, um, is, as long as they improve their application, that can help? What are, you, what are your thoughts? Definitely not a red flag for us. Mm -hmm. And I really do think that that is again the competitive nature of um, of this process. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's very common now. Gotcha. Um, but I think what you said, Dr. Webb, is um, is important. What have you done since mm -hmm. your initial application? Yeah. So we're going to want to see, you know, whether it's retaken an MCAT, additional um, uh, clinical experience. Um, have I taken some additional courses to improve my GPA? So what else have I done? Okay, I have a few more questions. Sure. And I was going to go actually to my channel. There's a couple students that just wanted to um, ask a just a few one or sure. two more questions. Uh, the first one is, let's see, this is in terms of the merger between the DO and the MD, how do you think that will affect your students at all? Well, we'll see because yeah. um, we don't yet, that hasn't, I mean, we, we will, we'll see, um, we'll see next year. Um, we think it's going to provide more opportunities. Okay. Um, we think it's very positive. Um, we're, we're excited about it. We, we think across the board it, it's 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 a positive move. Um, we're excited with our own residency programs that we started um, two years ago. We have um, five residency programs that are currently filled with non-UIW students. Mm -hmm. um, residency, certainly when anyone starts a medical school, and there's a lot of schools starting, it's important to address the whole residency mm -hmm. issue um, immediately. Um, it's our obligation to ensure that we have significant resident residency slots for our students. Um, so, but we see that as as an advantage. Okay, awesome. Uh, this is from Charlotte. She wants to know what are your thoughts on international students applying to the medical school. Sure. Um, thanks for your question, Charlotte. Um, 
Right now, since we are a new program, we are in the queue for the Department of Homeland Security, so we are mm -hmm. not yet approved uh, to take international students. And so we are still waiting. So that's a bit of a lengthy process, unfortunately. Okay. And I guess any last minute tips that you have for students out there that want to go into medicine specifically, you know, um, the DO route, what, what kind of advice would you give them? I think just you know, do your research. Mm -hmm. um, there are um, um, there is a great website that um, our association ACOM um, mm -hmm. um, has. It's called ChooseDO.org, and um, we will within the next couple of weeks be launching an online guide, which will be an easy resource to go to any DO program in the country. Wow. Um, and so just lots of good information. Um, leave your options open. Um, again, do your research about each school. I think understanding the focus and the mission of a school, particularly when you apply to it, mm -hmm. is important. Most schools will have a supplemental or a secondary application or on the original application, ask questions specific to that school. Make certain that you read that question very carefully mm -hmm. and answer it specific to that question and don't make it a generic answer. Um, that school will then know that you answered it specifically to that, to their okay. school. So. Awesome. Well, Andrea, thank you so much sure, for absolutely. Uh, allowing me. This was fun. Yeah, absolutely. An answering all the questions. I, I know you cleared up a lot of misconceptions and myths that are out there surrounding osteopathic medicine and okay. also shedding some really good light on your school here. I think you guys have a great thing that you have going Come on visit here. us. Um, <laughs> where can students find out more about the school here? Sure. And just come um, visit us on our, our, our website, um, of UIW Osteopathic Medicine. Um, we have um, online information sessions. We have um, virtual information sessions. We'll have one next week. Uh, just go onto our website. We would love to host you. Um, see what we're all about. Awesome. Thank you so much. Everyone else, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time. Bye.